So, and that kind of wasted time is, is stuff that people don't recognize or, and don't realize how big it is. Yeah. But there are studies that say people spend can spend upwards of 30% of their time every week searching for information to do their jobs. Well, if we can reduce that by using a knowledge management practices and processes, you know, to more like half an hour a week instead of a day and a half. Mm -hmm. That's is, uh, money in the bank. That's Absolutely big. it is. Now, what about, like, is there a threshold uh, for, like, does a company need to reach a certain size or a certain stage uh, and then knowledge management starts to make sense? Um, yeah, often to, I've done projects work with small, you know, 100 people in a boutique consulting firm. Um, all the way up to you know thousands of people in a financial institution. The bigger the organization, oftentimes the bigger the problem, and so the more noticeable it becomes. Mm -hmm. So there's more urgency and, and um, willingness to, to part with some money to solve it, mm -hmm. um, just because of the magnitude of size, rather than you know 25 people or 100 people. Um, the problems are the same. It's just an order of magnitude. Okay. So. And uh, I'm just curious about, uh, and this might sound like a strange question, but uh, um, there's been talk uh, in, in recent years where the, the, the boundary between the organization and its environment is, is more permeable. It's less of a firewall or less of a wall than it used to be. Mm -hmm. And so the issue of knowledge management that n not only serves within that wall, but also touches outside the wall, touches the other stakeholders in the company that are outside that wall, like mm -hmm. customers mm -hmm. and like uh, like the community. Absolutely. Do, do you have any thoughts about that or any? That's often one of the things that we look at in a, a phase two or a phase three of the project is going outside to those communities because, yeah, there's a lot of business that goes on between a company and its external community, whether it's you know, community events that they're supporting or whether it's with just with vendors and suppliers. There's a lot of collaboration and, and sharing that goes on. So oftentimes the, the internet, it, we give them a DMZ, we call it um, demilitarized zone, but um, outside the firewall, but in, whoops, mm -hmm. inside some security is so it's secure yeah. to share that information. So, because there is a lot and it's better than email. Yeah. I'm thinking that the, the 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 like right on the top list of the customers that would that would need someone like you are uh, people that are in a um, in a pleasant dilemma in in well there's many under different situations what do I know but <laughs> a group of a hundred people let's use a group of a hundred people and some whatever the company is suddenly they grew up into they got these extra clients over whatever it is. Things are looking good, whether it's recession or not. And they added 50 more staff and there's yeah. four more departments and like, oh my gosh, now how do we organize this? And then they, they scream, hey, we got the stuff, but help us. Yes. Things are happening, but so we don't lose it again. Yep. It's so things don't topple. That's, that's where you come in. Yep, that's yeah. it exactly. Then, and this consulting firm that I had worked with they, that's exactly what had happened. They had gone from 25 people to 100 in a year, year and a half, and there was just documents and information floating all over the place and email and share drives, and, and they knew that they could be more efficient and effective with it. They just, they'd grown so much so quickly that they, they just couldn't get on top of it. So yeah. I came in and, and helped them get it sorted out. And believe it or not, that really helps relax the stress away, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and the thing about the situation, the economic situation that we're currently in, um, it's a real opportunity for people to do things differently, um, and to rather than sticking with the status quo and saying I'm going to keep doing my job the same way I've been doing it, a lot there's been layoffs and and what have you, and so I'm trying to do more with less. Let's be more efficient with the technology that we've got and make sure that it's supporting our business processes mm -hmm. so that we're getting the best value for money out mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. So, absolutely. Um, don't know if this is a good question or not, but what about this whole phenomenon of social networking? You mentioned it once or twice mm -hmm. in the interview, but uh, do you have any thoughts on it and how businesses can use it and, you know... Except for the old, oh, well, let's open up a Facebook group and uh, we'll try to flog our TD whatever on it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I have friends that will, will, you know, cringe. I'm not a big social media fan. 
I have resisted Twitter and, and all of those as much as possible. That said, I have recently joined Twitter, and, and it's good because I can get keep track of some of the other people in knowledge management that are thought leaders, and I can, can kind of keep track of what they're doing and what they're thinking. So, Are you following them, or are they following you? Um, we're both following each other, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> which was kind of fun, because yeah. um, in some cases I haven't actually met them, so it, it yeah. was kind of cool that that they turned around and followed me. So yeah. so it's good to, as one of my modes of, of surveying the landscape and keeping up to date, keeping myself up to date on, on what's happening. Um, certainly, you know, I follow some organizations and, and people that have Facebook pages and, and that kind of thing to know what's going on. Um, and there's a lot of marketing being done um, through social media. There's also a lot of time wasted um, that said, I think it has its place, like everything else. You know, the, it is a, a valid marketing channel mm -hmm. now that that didn't exist ten years ago. Mm -hmm. So, you know, companies should figure out how to sh should figure out how to use it. it. And you um, can help them do that. I could. Okay, great. Um, now we're, we don't have much time left, Stephanie. But okay. I really, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Oh, thank you. I uh, hope the listeners have. Hope you have, Daniel. I have. Um, I'm less intimidated. Good. <laughs> I, I'm it's just not wondering. Intimidating. If, I'm just wondering if there's anything we haven't asked you that that's just you just just want to say something we've missed or something that's uh, going on in the, the world of knowledge management that uh, we haven't uh, touched on yet. Well, I'll do a little plug for my. I'm working with a couple of people um, for a Knowledge Workers Toronto group here on Meetup. So we've just started meeting in in January. Um, to do knowledge worker, knowledge management issues. Um, we're really, we've tried, or there have been attempts previously in Toronto to try and get some kind of knowledge management community going, mm -hmm. and it's, it's never taken off. But so far, signs are good. We've got 138 people signed up for our group on Meetup, and, oh, nice. and we've had some good turnouts, and, and we've got some good speakers lined up for the next couple of months. And and things so that's exciting to see we're not quite sure why if this is just the time finally it's it's a knowledge management's time in Toronto or or what but but we're quite excited about it so okay cool so how can people if they want to sign up for that oh it's on meetup mm -hmm. um, it's called knowledge workers Toronto uh, meetup is meetup.com and it's knowledge workers Toronto is the meetup group okay so great and, and if our next guest any super talented uh, singer songwriter writes a uh, uh, well, outside of writing great music, starts his own label, then maybe, and it becomes big, then maybe we'll have to come to, to you. Absolutely. All right. Okay. Very cool. Um, and how about your website? To, oh. uh, if people want to get in touch with you directly, it's missing. Well, www.missingpuzzlepiececonsulting.ca, and I know it's a long name, but you only have to type it in once, and then you bookmark it. So missing puzzle, puzzle piece. piece. It's easy, and, yep. and you were wearing. One. And I'm wearing one. It's always good when you can have jewelry as a tax write-off, right? Yeah. That's. <laughs> So. Fantastic. Now, I just got to figure out what kind of jewelry I'm going to be wearing as a tax write-off, because I don't think that Bacardi thing counts. <laughs> you got your life rings. You know, that, that's a that's right. You know. Boy, are they a write-off. Oh, okay, no, Stephanie, it's been great to chat with you. Stephanie Barnes from MissingPuzzlePieceConsulting.com. .ca. .ca. Even better. Excellent. So thanks for coming in. I Thank really you. enjoyed it, and uh, I, I did too. Maybe I'm gonna give you a call and uh, and uh, see what uh, see what. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I like your hockey card. Thank I'll you. I'll give you a call. Great. Okay. Thanks, thanks everybody. Uh, not everybody. We're not over yet, Daniel. The show's not over. Jeff Straker is here, and uh, we're gonna come back and chat with him in a minute. But I think we got some of his music ready to go right now first, and then we'll come back and chat with Jeff here on. Liquid Lunch, that channel.com.